5.1 GHz stable, that's what I managed to overclock my CPU to. With that said, welcome everybody to this overclocking review of the Intel Core i7 7700K Cable Lake CPU with the MSI Z270 Gaming M7 motherboard, just like I promised you. Today I'll not just be showing you the 5.1 GHz overclock, but also the 5 and 4.8 GHz ones with, of course, all the benchmarks so you get a good idea on what to expect when overclocking this Cable Lake i7 processor. I'd like to thank MSI for kindly providing me this kick-ass motherboard for the review and therefore making this video possible. So once again, as for the CPU, I'll be using the i7-7700K and as for the motherboard, the MSI Z270 Gaming M7. If you want to know more about both products with detailed specs and features, feel free to watch my reviews of those. Now just to let you know, every CPU will overclock differently, either needing more or less voltage to achieve a specific clock speed, or your chip might not even be able to hit that frequency at all, or maybe just as well exceed mine. But with this high quality Z270 motherboard by MSI, with a 12 face of your M power design, I theoretically should be able to overclock fairly well. For reference, with this motherboard, my 7700K at stock clocks runs at 1.171 volts at 100% load. All right, now this is how I overclock. Extremely simple. I just go into the BIOS, change the CPU ratio to 48, that results in 4.8 GHz, enhanced turbo is disabled, and scroll down to CPU core voltage mode and change it from auto to adaptive mode. This will make the CPU run at the low voltage and idle. Then for the core voltage I enter 1.2 volts and simply save the settings. According to CPU-Z my chip is now running at 1.219 volts. That's the voltage I got my 7700K running completely stable. For 5 GHz I repeat the steps, change the CPU ratio to 50 and go for 1.26 volts in the BIOS. This results in 1.277 volts in CPU-Z, rock solid 5 GHz stable. Thanks to this MSI Z270 Gaming M7 board I even managed managed to get stable 5.1 GHz out of my chip. CPU ratio 51 and voltage 1.34 volts in a BIOS. CPU-Z displays 1.354 volts under 100% load, which I consider to be perfectly safe. 1.4 volts is my personal limit, I wouldn't go any further than that with the 7700K. But again, the voltages, depending on the CPU of course, every chip is different, but even the motherboard needs to be factored in. Just for comparison with the ASRock Z270 Extreme 4, the same exact 7700K chip runs at 1.216 volts at stock compared to 1.171 volts on this MSI M7 board. When overclocked to 4.8 GHz, it's 1.28 volts with the ASRock and just 1.219 volts with the MSI board. At 5 GHz, it's a whopping 1.408 versus 1.277 volts. A huge difference. This leads to more overclocking headroom with the MSI board. At 5 GHz, the same i7 with the ASRock board runs at, I don't know, about 85 degrees, whereas it's just around 6 66 degrees with the MSI Z270 Gaming M7. There however is a very noticeable price difference between those two motherboards. So my point is, the motherboard does in fact matter very much when it comes to overclocking. Do not underestimate the importance of the motherboard. Now that that's out of the way, let's take a look at the benchmarks.
Now, as you may have seen, overclocking doesn't necessarily improve the experience in every aspect. In fact, most of you probably are interested in the gaming results and that's exactly where overclocking is pointless, it seems. Sure, I admit I didn't really run too many CPU demanding games, but that's the point, sort of. I want to show you how the chip performs on average when overclocked. In the majority of games, there's hardly any difference noticeable at all. So gamers won't really benefit from overclocking this chip. But on the other hand, users that rely on rendering power for all that productivity stuff rejoice. This is where we get to see some very impressive performance improvements. As for the temperatures and power consumption, not too bad actually. But that's depending on what motherboard you're using. At least with this MSI Z270 Gaming M7, I did get top-notch results out of my i7-7700K. Long story short, I wouldn't recommend gamers to overclock their chip. Maybe just for fun, but not for the performance gains. For aspects such as video and image editing, rendering and whatnot, overclocking does, however, lead to good performance improvements. Now let me know your thoughts on this subject. And what do you think is the sweet spot? 4.8 GHz, 5 or even 5.1 GHz? Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.